When talking about anime studios, there are few as famous or as loved as Ghibli, bringing us classic films such as My Neighbor Totoro, Mononoke Hime, Spirited Away, Howl's Moving Castle, and Ponyo. They have truly made a name for themselves, not just in the anime community, but in the mainstream as well. Out of their massive filmography, one that goes incredibly underappreciated in my opinion is the 1988 film Grave of the Fireflies. There are very few films that can make me feel in any way sad. Actually, I could count the number of times I've cried during a movie on one hand if I had no fingers. So when I say this movie put me on the brink of tears three separate times, don't take it lightly. So as a warning, I won't be talking about a happy beginning, a happy middle, or a happy end. Grave of the Fireflies takes place in 1945, at the tail end of the Second World War. It follows Saita, a teenager charged with taking care of his younger sister, Setsuo, after an American firebombing separates the two children from their parents. This movie was based on a short story with the same name written in 1967 by Aoki Yosaka, and while it is not word for word the same as his real experiences, specifically, at one point I will not be talking about for the reason of spoilers, the story is close enough to his real experiences for me to say it was based on a true story. This movie was about the hardships of families during war, and that sweetness and innocence don't last. But the message I took from the film was that even when the war ends, even when the violence stops, you can't repair what's already gone. What's done is done. The two biggest complaints I hear about this movie is that Saita is irrational and makes stupid decisions, and that Setsuko is immature and annoying. For the first one, tell me you've never done something in the moment and then immediately regretted it afterwards. In the case of Setsuko, of course she's immature and annoying. She's four. The fact that people complain about this confuses me so much. It's Studio Ghibli, so there isn't really any point of talking extensively about animation. Like, it's not Fate Zero, but for something released in 1988, it looked amazing. Specifically, character animation. One aspect of the movie that I don't hear talked about very often is the music. The main ending theme, which you are currently hearing, is something I would put on my playlist if it was from any other anime. But because it's from this one, it just ruins my mood. In conclusion, even though I believe this movie is a masterpiece, as the title suggests, for its immaculate storytelling, animation, score, and writing, it is very far from one of my favorite anime, because I would never want to watch it again. I'd recommend this to anyone who's interested in history, but just know, it's not for the faint of heart. Setsuko, 
母ちゃん大きなクスの木の下の。なんでホタルすぐ死んでしまうん？